From the headquarters of Telesur English in Quito, Ecuador, this is From the South, I'm Jose Daniel Lopez. The former president of Peru, Alan Garcia, has left the Uruguayan ambassador's residence in Lima where he was seeking asylum. This comes after the Uruguayan president, Tabaré Vázquez, denied his request. The former Peruvian president is accused of receiving $100,000 from Odebrecht over the construction of the Metro Lima. He has been in the ambassador's residence since November 17. In Peru, funciona the three powers of the state work freely in Peru, and it is the judiciary that is conducting the investigations of possible economic crimes of the former president of Peru. Our correspondent in Peru, Veronica Insausti, has the latest. Former leader Alan Garcia was forced to leave the ambassador's residence this morning after learning of the Uruguayan president's decision not to grant him political asylum. President Tabare Vasquez says there was no evidence to support the politician's claim that he was being targeted politically. After Garcia's asylum request was turned down, the former president went back home to an exclusive area in Lima, and the international press is waiting there outside his residence, hoping to speak with him. But up until this moment, only his personal secretary has read out loud a short letter in which he denies any illicit association with Obedekt. He also says from now on he's willing to cooperate with investigators. On the other hand, President Martin Vizcarra says no one in the country is exempt from judicial investigation. Politicians have had mixed reactions to this decision. Most, however, have reportedly accepted it. The Vice President of Ecuador, Maria Alejandra Vicuña, has been temporarily relieved of her duties. This after the scandal that involved her in an alleged network of illicit payments for her party. According to Vicuña and President Lenny Moreno, she has been suspended from her duties to allow her to focus on her defense. The suspension will last until December 31st. Our correspondent in Quito, Ecuador, Denise Herrera, has more on this. Hello, yes, good afternoon. Indeed, Ecuador's President Lenin Moreno confirms he is removing from his duties the Vice President of Ecuador, Mira Alejandra Vicuña, in official statement. He said that he decided to suspend Vice President Maria Alejandra Vicuña from her duties with the aim she has her right to a legitimate defense. Those functions will be taken by the government. General Secretary Jose Augusto Briones, we should remember that the Vice President of Ecuador, Maria Alejandra Vicuña, was accused of receiving rights from her advisor. He had an in an official statement, one of her advisor, Angel Sagbay, said in an official and an in an official and national media that he had to pay bribes when she was a lawmaker at the National Assembly. Also, President Lenny Moreno announces new changes in his cabinet. He uh, announced new Minister of Education, he, uh, Secretary of Intelligence, and also of Environment. He also uh, put in charge of the Secretary of the State for Policy, the Interior Minister of Ecuador, Maria Paula Romo. We have to wait if Maria Alejandra Vicuña will take responsibility of hers of her of this allegation against her he also said in official statement in her a twitter account she will thank she will take time to face these allegations is all the information we have for now back to you at the studio the eighth special meeting of the heads of government of the caribbean community is underway in trinidad and tobago the summit focused on issues surrounding the implementation of the caricom single market and economy the CSME seeks to create a single economic space in the region by removing restrictions. We have to go back to the basis. Can we survive independently? And I don't think there's any scenario that any one of the countries in the CARICOM can survive by themselves. And we need to be part of a, of a group. And hopefully today, um, with the leadership of, of, of Ms. Motley, that we can regain that momentum that we had many, many years ago. 
and uh, solve some of the differences that we have and to make sure that this is an equitable place and that it's strengthening our region and making us more competitive against the rest of the world. Any other issues we have to talk about, the issue of transportation, the, the fact that we have so many problems re getting to each other's countries in the region is a serious problem. It's sometimes it's easier to, to go to Miami and London than, than it is to go to some islands in the Caribbean from Grenada. So clearly we, we, can't, we can't be talking single market in the economy and not have means of uh, making contact with each other physically and otherwise. Guyana's oil reserve estimates have been hiked by 25%. This after U.S. oil giant ExxonMobil made its 10 discovery offshore in the South American country. Department of Energy Director Dr. Mai Boyne said this latest find is expected to facilitate substantial social and economic improvements. This discovery reinforces Guyana's potential to produce more than three quarters of a million barrels of oil daily by 2025. Much of the, money is basically the United Nations Climate Change Conference COP24 has begun in Poland with warnings that time is running out to save human civilization from catastrophe. A number of world leaders and personalities told the opening ceremony that action is needed now. The veteran naturalist David Attenborough said climate change is the most serious threat faced by human beings in their modern history. Right now, we are facing a man-made disaster of global scale, our greatest threat in thousands of years, climate change. If we don't take action, the collapse of our civilizations and the extinction of much of the natural world is on the horizon. The UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres told the conference that almost everyone understood the gravity of the threat, so it was extraordinary that the world continues to head in the wrong direction. According to the World Meteorological Organization, the 20 warmest years on record have been in the past 22 years, with the top four in the past four years. The concentration of carbon dioxide is the highest it has been in three million years, and the emissions are now growing again. Climate change is the most important issue we face. It affects all our plans for sustainable development and a safe, secure and prosperous world. So it's hard to comprehend why we are collectively still moving too slowly and even sometimes moving in the wrong direction. The IPCC's special report tells us that we still have time to limit temperature rise, but that time is running out. Jamaica's Prime Minister has called for more action and less talk on climate change, which poses a serious threat to small island states. Andrew Holness told the G20 meeting in Argentina that the small Caribbean states do not have the luxury of engaging in psychological debate on the issue. Holness nudged G20 leaders to make good on the agreement to mobilize 100 billion US dollars per annum to address climate change. The Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan has been holding talks with President Nicolás Maduro on his visit to Caracas. President Maduro welcomed Erdogan with honors at the Miraflores Palace and, and showing some of he, the items in the historical collection there. There is a first visit, this is the first visit by a Turkish head of state to Venezuela. Erdogan expressed his support for the Bolivarian government against the economic war and sanctions it is suffering. I am positive that my friend Maduro, thanks to the support of the Venezuelan people, is going to resist the attacks the country is suffering. I want my visit to be considered as a symbol of collaboration of the Turkish with the Venezuelan people. Earlier, President Erdogan laid a wreath at the Pantheon in Caracas, where the heroes of Venezuela's independence are buried. The two countries are compromised to strengthen cooperation. Turkey will share knowledge with Venezuela to help in its economic recovery program. Let's take a look at what both men had to say as they pledged the work closer together to advance their mutual interests.
Between Venezuela and Turkey, there is a human and commercial relation that is getting closer and is going to strengthen with time. Infrastructure, construction, aviation, civil defense, mining, energy, health, agriculture and tourism are the sectors in which we have to work together. We are going to build a mosque in Caracas. Maduro has been positive. Also, we are going to have in Ankara University a subject about Simón Bolívar. It's going to be a cultural exchange between the two countries. I also want to thank Erdogan, his wife and the whole delegation. Thanks for being in our beloved homeland. We have signed accords to advance economical, financial, military and cultural development. We have planned our relationship till 2030 and we are committed to make things real. We'll take a short break now and join us again after this. Welcome back. U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo has met with the incoming Mexican Foreign Minister Marcelo Ebrard in Washington, D.C. In a tweet, Ebrard explained that they discussed their shared commitment to address the common challenges and opportunities for the future. This as thousands of migrants wait to cross the U.S.-Mexican border. Meanwhile, United States Border Police have arrested and detained members of the migrant car caravan who crossed the U.S. border between Tijuana and San Diego on Sunday. Thousands of migrants from Central America attempting to enter the United States to seek asylum have been stranded at the border for weeks now. They are trying to escape poverty and violence in their home countries. Our correspondent in Tijuana, Alina Duarte, has the latest. We are standing outside the Benito Juarez shelter, which has been closed. However, there are hundreds of migrants who have decided to stay at this location. There are several reasons for that decision. Some of them are making requests to work here in Mexico. Others are seeking asylum in the United States. The reminder are adamant that they don't know one to be reallocated to the shelter known as El Barretal. You see, the shelter is located in one of the most dangerous areas in Tijuana, so people are quite desperate at this point. They don't know even know where they will end up, but still they have decided to stand their ground and remain in this place. Fifteen migrants have embarked on a hunger strike, which is now in its fifth day. Meanwhile, the federal government has promised to provide some aid to those who have chosen to stay. Mexico's new president, Andrés Manuel López Obrador, has set up a true commission to investigate the case of 43 students who disappeared from Ayosinapa. López Obrador signed the presidential decree in the presence of the students' relatives. Deputy Secretary of Human Rights, Alejandro Encinas, will head the commission. More than 20,000 Cuban doctors developed their training in Brazilian universities that were part of the More Doctors program. Let's find out how they train. Brazilian lecturers and trainers recognize that the Cuban doctors have a wealth of international experience and have already specialized in particular areas. They're undertaking further professional development. There is respect for humanity, diversity, and people. That's what makes them different. That's not taught in medical school. It's a human and civil process in Cuban education and their political and social education about the need to care for human beings. When they speak about solidarity, people don't understand if they haven't experienced living in Cuba. Brazilian president-elect Jair Bolsonaro soon cast doubt on the professionalism of Cuban doctors, and in particular, the quality of their qualifications. We had the opportunity to offer specialization courses at the main medical universities in Brazil. During five years of collaboration, more than 20,000 Cuban doctors have been approved and were certified to practice medicine here in Brazil. We were trained in Brazil by Brazilian professors, both in the language and in medicine, and if you didn't pass, you couldn't get into the More Doctors program. The doctors graduated from the Latin American School of Medicine in Havana, which has been training doctors for two decades, and they recall their experience there. It was a fantastic experience to work with them for the exchange of experiences and knowledge. They were professionals with experience from other countries on other missions. 
it was very good to learn from them and to watch how affectionately they deal with patients. Under the More Doctors program, the collaboration between Brazil and Cuba allowed both nations to mutually benefit. Brazilian patients were treated with compassion by the most experienced and skilled doctors, made possible by further training available to them. Marchers and campaigns are taking place around the globe as the International Day of Persons with Disabilities is observed. In Uruguay, people have taken to the streets to demand equal conditions for those who are differently able. Thousands will gather in the capital to demand that legislation to ensure equal access to education and work is enacted. They are also asking the government for open dialogue towards ensuring that all workplaces are made disability complaint. Also in Venezuela, the International Day for People with Disabilities has been celebrated. President Nicolás Maduro took to Twitter to remember the country's disabled and reinforce his commitment to them. He also announced a new plan for a social protection system that guarantees their rights and inclusion. Not everyone has reason to celebrate the National Disabilities Day. A national deputy in Argentina condemned the government for the treatment of those most vulnerable in society. On her Twitter account, Lucila Massin said that there is nothing to celebrate on this International Day of People with Disabilities. The government refuses to restore the rejected pensions and to award the 170,000 that are ranked equally reduced departures for 2019. The perse perseverity of the adjustment always against the most vulnerable. Chilean police, who tried to disperse protesting indigenous vendors, came under a volley of vegetables. Of officers took cover as the Mapuche woman showered them with the edible projectiles. The vendors are demanded the right to continue playing their trade on the streets of Temuco. A new law, which came into effect on December 1st, banned unlicensed street sellers from operating in the area. We'll be back in a minute. Stay with us. always subjugated the masses. But who are the actors behind every move? What are their real interests? We analyze every move on Critical Move Weekdays, only on Telesur. Welcome back. Demonstrators have protested outside the UK Parliament ahead of a key vote on the Brexit deal. Brian dashing banners and flags, anti-Brexiteers demand another referendum. Parliament will begin five days of debate on Tuesday and the final vote will be held on December 11. The UK government has published a summary of legal advice which falls short of the full document demanded by the House of Commons. If we sign the deal next week, if it's ratified next week, we're so joined by an international treaty, committed by an international treaty, uh, to remain in the European Union from which there is no escape. Uh, and I'm hoping that the House of Commons will vote it down. I don't want the deal. Uh, the only deal I want is to remain in the EU. We have the best deal. It's the best deal that any company, any country has, actually. 
Kurdish woman have created a self-sustainable women-only village in the north of Syria. The village of Shinwar aims to provide women, mainly widows with children, with a place where they can find freedom and security. Men are allowed to visit but cannot stay. The project is seen as an alternative society and advocates for communal and ecological living. A Russian spacecraft carrying three astronauts successfully dug at the International Space Station. The trio launched into space from Kazakhstan early on Monday. The crew members abroad, the Russian spacecraft, are from the United States, Canada and Russia. Nearly two months ago, a rocket malfunctioned, forced NASA and the Russian Space Agency to abort the launch of a Yasu mission. Real Madrid's Croatia midfielder Luka Modric was named winner of the 2018 Ballon d'Or. He broke Cristiano Ronaldo's and Lionel Messi's decade-long hold on the prestigious award. Modric helped Real Madrid win a third successive Champions League title in May. He also captained Croatia to their first World Cup final and was named player of the tournament, this despite losing the Fran to France in the final. It's a unique feeling. Uh, I'm happy, proud and honored. I have uh, sensational emotions at the moment that is really hard to describe by the words. And that's why uh, allow me to thank to all of those who helped me to, to be here tonight. With this, we come to the end of this news brief. These and many other stories you can find at our website at telesorienglish.net. And join us on social media, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. For Telestory English, I'm Jose Daniel Lopez. Thank you for watching.